Here's the adapter that I wish Godox made. It's just a Bowens adapter on the front, and a Godox mount on the back. And now I can use any of my Bowens modifiers without the need for an S2 bracket. And this would work with the AD300, AD400, ML60, or ML30. To make the adapter, I spent $19 on the Bowens mount adapter and then $25 on the low profile speed ring. If you want to learn how to burn $44, stick around. Alright, so here's a close up of the finished adapter. We're going to take the AD400, AD300 adapter, take the five screws out that hold it together. This isn't actually a screw, it's just a bolt with a nut on the other end. All right, with those five screws taken out, we can now lift off the top of the adapter. And when you flip it over, you'll notice these are the little tension springs for the Bowens mount. Because of the way it's designed, the screws don't sit flush, which is why there are so many holes on the metal ring. And when you're putting it back together, just remember the circle with the notch out of it lines up to the slide release. If you want a little extra credit and make the slide releases line up with each other like I did on my other one, I'll show you the easiest way to do that. So with it attached, I'm just going to mark a line on the back of the speed ring where that lever lines up. And then when I clamp this ring, I'm going to look for the circle with the notch out of it and line that up with the mark I just made. So I've got the two points there. I'm just going to draw a line. All right, I'm going to clamp it and make sure not to cover the holes. Now I'm going to use some mini C clamps to keep it from moving when I mark it. When I attach the C clamps, I did it kind of outside of the mount. So that way I can remove these spring clamps and then test and make sure it goes on my light fine. Here you can see how I lined up the slide with the pin. So basically we're using this ring from the adapter as a template, and I'm gonna use a scribe to mark this. You only need to mark around the outside of the circle, the holes, and then the notches. You don't have to mark the inside. I forgot to flip the template over, and we'll see why that was an issue later on. And now I've got an outline to mark the holes. I didn't mark these tiny notches, because I'm just going to grind the speed ring down so it fits. Here I'm drawing lines through the center of the circles, and this just helps me be more accurate with the center punch. After center punching, I clamped the speed ring to the edge of my welding table, and I used a 5 16th bit to drill the holes. When drilling holes in metal with a twist drill, the back side of the holes will need to be cleaned up. I chose to use a countersink to smooth out the drilled holes, and I polished them up with a strip disc on my angle grinder. The next step was to remove the excess metal on the outside of the speed ring. I could have done this many different ways, but I chose to use my 12 inch disc sander. And here's what happens when you forget to flip the template over. So we're going to flip over the speed ring, grab our spring, and put the slide back in place. And through the magic of video editing, I fixed the speed ring so that the levers lined up.